Listen. What the heck happened to my mixer? Why did it get muted? Oh my gosh. That's news. I haven't done that in a long time. Let me start over. Good afternoon. Good morning. Good evening. Welcome. My name is Jeff Fritz. Oh my gosh, I can't believe that. Um, and the hey, listen worked. Um, let's start over. It's uh, December 27th, 2018. I hope you great, had a great holiday if you celebrate. Um, I, w I was trying to say hello to everybody here in the chat room. I know, and I think I know why my mixer was messed up, and I'll t show you in a minute. Um, so let me say good afternoon to Shy Sharp, Robert Tables, Bardaki, IT Goran, HHXX, Sanad Meskin, Latin BR is here, Lichen, 1534, because the other 1533, they were busy, they were occupied. The, uh, the, this is the 1534th Lichen, so all the werewolves, never mind. Um, let's see, Parathon is here, Moscon, yes, yeah, thank you. Um, Sorry, I messed up with the sound. Eldorian, hey there. Um, oop, my my screen jumped. What happened there? I just lost my position. I thought I saw Dev, uh, Eldorian there. Where did we go? Now, if you can only read lips. <laughs> uh, Sven Vandenbrand. Uh, Kevin is here. Hello. Uh, Bokyo, Mizardex, Rambling Geek. My gosh, I'm just trying to keep up with everybody here. Dev lead. Is here no botanist mixer trying to come back from the holidays? Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. Winter mute. The dulcet radio tones of C sharp Fritz now playing. Thanks so much, Dave Noterer. Hello, hello. Tib TV JFC. That scared the heck out of me. I was lurking while I was starting up. Hey, um, finally get to catch one of these live. Fantastic. Nicondria is here. Priyanshu Agrawal. Hello, hello, welcome. All right. Where is the counter? Whoop. The counter? The counter? I'm not sure what counter you're referring to. Let me get things started. I'm wearing my Xbox hat today because I'm sure a lot of you, a lot of friends, may have gotten a game system like an Xbox for the holiday. So we'll celebrate and recognize that today. No Santa hat today. We're done our Christmas readings. And let's get some music playing in the background here. Um, I haven't played this one in a while. This is called Judson. And this is music to code by from our friend Carl Franklin. Let's get this a little bit louder. There we go. Much better. All right. This is music that's scientifically engineered. It's designed to get you in the flow, to get you in the groove, focused on whatever it is that you're working on, whether it's code, whether it's homework, whatever task you may be working on, it's designed to help you focus and let all those other worries just kind of melt away. Check it out, musictoflowby.com is the app. You can go there, download a couple of songs free that you can use right now. Each song is 25 minutes long. We'll have this song on loop throughout the rest of the show. I want to put a big thank you out there to our friend Carl Franklin for letting us listen to his music while we're writing code together today. Hey, Ancient Coder, good to see you. Node Botanist, I'm, you're awake to watch live. I'm not going to be working on the Raspberry Pi today. Maybe I will. No, I don't think I will. I don't think, I, not today, but we should do something together. Definitely. Seems very lo-fi. You like it. Oh, thank you, Tib TV. Um... I'm, and Nakandra, I'm glad you enjoy uh, uh, my voice. What's that music URL? Absolutely. Let's post that in the chat room. Uh, look at that. Fritzbot actually answered it for me. Oh, it actually worked. Uh, Stelzy, first I thought I had something in my setup wrong. You played with the sound. And uh, I got it fixed from my side. Um, let me go over. So we've already had some folks say, hey, let's look at the counter. Can we see the counter? Let's roll over to the tight shot. There we are. And I want to talk about this. Uh, we're at 4636 is the counter for the, for my rainbow beard challenge. Of course, I've, I've put this out there since about the summertime, um, and said, if we get to this by a certain event, public event that I'm broadcasting at, I will dye my beard rainbow for that event. Um, we missed both of those goals. So uh, I'll just do it when we hit 5,000 and it won't be in public at an event. It'll be here inside 
inside my home studio. We will die. It rainbow. We're at 4636 of 5,000. I have a feeling we're going to hit that in the month of January. Node botanist agrees we should totally pair program sometime. It'll be amazing. It'll be great because I, there's so much IoT great stuff. And I think you should check out Node Botanist. Let me throw a shout out out there. Node Botanist. They do a great job uh, talking about JavaScript, uh, Node.js, and IoT devices. More complex than the Raspberry Pi. Just about in the same area as the MX chip. There's the MX chip. Check them out. Um, are, you, are you doing a stream today? Node botanist? Let me know. Ancient Coder says, I hope you all had a great Christmas. Yes, yes. I, and that's not to, not to steal from uh, our friend um, Noobcat. Um, but I did want to do a, a, a quick shout out of a, a couple of the pieces of gear that I got for that I got for the holiday that are going to help me when I'm particularly on the road streaming. Um, Node Botanist is buying an MX chip. Very cool. Uh, hang on, Stelzy. Hang on. Hang on. We're going to get there. Uh, great seeing people here yesterday at Robert Table's stream. Yes, Robert, so our friend Robert Tables, you see him there in the chat. Um, he started a stream yesterday first time um and he was talking about uh node js and docker so if that's if that's something that fits into your programming stack um check out did, did you record a vod let's put a shout out there to robert tables there you go welcome to the streamers club absolutely um if that's something you're interested in, check him out. I think he's building a schedule. It's, he did his first stream. I always want to support other folks that are programmers and that are streaming. Um, we're a we're a small community here of, of developer streamers, and I want to make sure that we grow and that folks learn. I know I I know I don't know all the technologies. I know my my corner of the .NET space. I know it just enough JavaScript to be dangerous. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Um, but other folks are out there like Node Botanist, like Noobcat, like Code Rushed, like Dev Chatter, and Robert Tables as well now, that are going to help you, you know, learn and ask questions, answer questions for you about those things. Uh, yeah, Tables did a stream on Docker. Absolutely. Hey, Svava, good to see you. 4 p.m. later today, uh, 4 p.m. Eastern. All right. So throw, throw Robert Tables a follow so you get notified about when he's going to be going live. So we're going to get there, Stelzy. Here we go. So uh, I, got a, I got two things for the holiday, two presents that, that helped me out. Uh, Mama C Sharp Fritz helped me out with this. I got a new Elgato HD60. There it is on the screen. Here it is in person. Um, this is a great device that does video capture, and I use this when I'm on the road. I may use this here at home to uh, pull video off the Raspberry Pi, because the Raspberry Pi has an HDMI connector. What this does is this takes video, it turns effectively another machine into a video capture device, like a webcam. So whatever video is being output, you push, uh, let's see if I can scroll down here and, and see if it shows the one side. So you can actually see. There it is. That's what I want you to see. So let me maximize that and let's let's go over let's go over to the big screen. Hey, there we go. Um, so what you do is you plug in the video out from your one PC into the HDMI here, and then you have USB C. So you have that high speed connection coming off of this. You plug this in to your PC and it shows up. It makes the video from that other machine show up as a webcam inside of things like OBS or, or uh, what's it called? Xtreme, X Stream View, I forget, the other video producing systems. It shows up and uh, really, really easy way for you to get video from another machine. Now I'm using another PC, another laptop when I'm on the road using this or I'm gonna use a Raspberry Pi, but you might use it with something like a Nintendo Switch or an Xbox or a PlayStation to get video into your other device. It's, uh, there's reviews out here that were just published a few days ago and uh, 
the prices are kind of reasonable for this type of device. So I think it's interesting, no price information from Amazon. But check it out. Um, I have the HD60, the previous version of this, which is down here a little bit further. And I thought this was great. This is exactly what I needed because it captured at 60 frames per second at high def, but it, it doesn't capture instantly. There's a little bit of lag. Mr. Regs, thanks so much for that subscription. I appreciate you bringing a tier one sub four months in a row. Very, very cool. Thanks so much for, for keeping that up. And uh, so this was the device I was using, but I started experiencing lag. Um, so I'm going to this one, which doesn't have anywhere near the delay, and it'll even, um, I thought I saw that it would push, where's, the, there's a comparison here. These are all their video capture devices. So I had this one, and I've just taken the next step over because I need this portable. It's USB 3, 40 MIPS coming off of it, but it's got this instant game view so that your, your display coming across is instant doesn't have the h264 encoder i don't care um but unlimited capture flashback recording i have no idea what stream command is but it's gonna work great Four for me time. Fun. <laughs> uh thank you tiago i appreciate that hey eckert good to see you use a cheaper d uh, type of device and had so many issues yes yes there's definitely something to be said for um, for stepping up. Hey, Pixelogic, good to see you. Um, start small, grow with your stream. Slowly build and buy those new pieces of equipment that you need. Um, I was using two machines for the longest time. And I actually used remote desktop connection, right? I, I would remote from one machine into the next when I was on the same network and you were actually looking at video from the other machine when I would broadcast. Right now, because of the desktop that I use, the power that's on it, the stupid amount of RAM on it, and the gigantic video card on it, I can run OBS and Visual Studio on the same machine. So that's one approach that, I've, that I'm taking now, but when I'm on the road, I've got laptops. So I run two laptops, and I use this card now to connect in between them. I was using the 60, but now I'll be using the 60S. The other thing, that I got that I wanted to call out. I got a wireless microphone to use when I'm on the road. Now, if you saw my video that I did from Microsoft Ignite, I did, uh, I did a workshop live from Microsoft Ignite and I wore my um, Corsair gaming headphones, wireless gaming headphones so that I had a little bit of freedom to walk around the workshop and give instructions. And it was really clunky because those headphones, these are, these are skull candy that I normally wear. Um, but the wireless headphones that I was wearing there, I couldn't hear the students. So I ended up working with it hanging off my head. That was annoying. That was a pain in the neck. So I got one of these that plugs into your USB. Here it is and it's wireless so it'll plug into the usb of my machine so instead of using whatever microphone right i can use a usb hub and i can have multiple microphones and this is why i had this little bit of a problem here i was tinkering with this and getting it working with obs so it's wireless from the headset to the PC and then on the PC I've got, it's got a fat USB dongle plugging plugged into it that will receive the connection from this and go out. Now this one that I ordered it's really cheap at 40 bucks um, but you can run a number of these on various wireless uh, 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 right wireless bands and you can effectively have a handful of po folks uh, talking at the same time, some sort of a talk show if you want to host that. But not only does it come with the headset, and that's not like, you, it doesn't plug in. That's not an audio thing there. That's just a brace that sits against your face. Okay. Um, but it also comes with a lapel mic. I haven't even opened lapel, the lapel mic, but there it is. And that just plugs into the wireless base there. And you'll be able to have a lapel mic. So what I'm thinking um, it, at, is at my in-person 
events in the future when I am giving a presentation and they do allow me to stream it, I'll use the lapel mic or I'll use the headset mic. Probably the headset mic, just because that's easier, it's out of the way, and it's not rubbing against my shirt. And I'll give my presentation. Um, let's see. Uh, Eldorian says, needs one of these for BlizzCon. Eh, maybe. For many streamers, capturing is some kind of black magic with the capture thing. Some microscope cameras are having very outside the norm of HDMI standard. Eh. Catch the box also. What's catch the box? The Yeti is not portable. Agreed. So I was taking... I was taking a Yeti microphone with me to various events, and I tried using it at the last code party. And uh, it's big, it's clunky, and it takes this ugly um, USB mini connection, not USB micro. And um, the folks at TSA see that Yeti microphone, they're like, what the heck is this thing? And they get real suspicious of you. Swappable batteries. This uses AA batteries. So absolutely swappable, right? and it's got a battery indicator on it, fine, fantastic. Uh, love all the gadgets I have on the streams. Made a promise that I wouldn't get kit until I made a habit out of streaming. Yeah, take your time, get into these things, slowly build. I'm 13 months in, and I'm still buying new things to upgrade my stream. Just take it easy. Hey, Fairy Wings, it's big and strange, but it works. <laughs> Good morning. Uh, let's see, what do we got here? Da, 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 da. All right. Let's see. Uh, bought a Surface Pro 6. I love drawing on your colleagues' photos, says Diago. Nice. Nice. <laughs> well done. All right. So that's uh, that's my two little gadgets that I got for Christmas. Anything? Get any, anybody get some cool stuff there besides the Surface Pro 6 for Tiago got? that anybody in the chat room got something cool they wanted to, to share and talk about. What is Catchbox? Y you keep linking to this. What is this? Catchbox, engage your audience with the world's first soft throwable microphone. <laughs> ah, that's funny. Um, throwable microphone, neat. You can customize it, put your logo on it. Oh my gosh. And looks like a wireless base there so that you can get it plugged back in. Oh, that's funny. Neat. Thanks for sharing that. But yeah, everybody does a post on equipment. Lint chocolate only. That's not bad. Wintermute got volume two of the Imposter's Handbook. Uh, our friends Rob Connery and Scott Hanselman wrote that. Very cool. I should read it because I'm always feeling imposter syndrome. And imposter syndrome is that thing that that j just about every speaker, every every I want to say public face um, gets where you think, oh my gosh, I'm not good enough. I'm I'm um, did I do this right? Are people going to see right through me? It, that's imposter syndrome. Len and Br got a new office chair. Very nice. Why does Catchbox Light cost more than the Pro version? I don't know. How to get started, when to dive into higher equipment, good bargains. That's a great idea. Janescu, you're still waiting on the Surface Go? Yeah, right back to the folks there at Code Party. Talk to them. Lego Bugatti Veyron for Dev Lead's imaginary son. Very nice. Very nice. Christmas hat, Voltra Power Bank. I got my... Oh, Mrs. C-Sharp Fritz. She saw my my carry-on luggage that I use when I travel, and it's all beat up. It's this old green suitcase. And uh, she got me a brand new one. It's got the four-way wheels on it. I still had two-way wheels, right? You can only pull it in one direction. It's got the four-way wheels on it, and it's got a power bank on it, so I can charge my phone when I'm at the airport. That's pretty cool. Uh, that was from Away. Away luggage. Um, yeah, here we go. So she got me the bigger carry-on with the ejectable battery. So one of these. That's kind of cool. Show me where the thing is. Yep, there's the inside. There it is. So I can you can charge your phone. You charge up this, and then the battery ejects, so you can charge it wherever. Mrs. C-Sharp Fritz must listen to podcasts. Nope. Nope. She doesn't. This bag has character, says Bustafer. <laughs> 
Uh, Eldorian says he's been doing .NET for 10 years and feels like such an imposter. Yeah, but Eldorian, you got to build this year and you got to meet all the folks. You're definitely not an imposter. You got your stuff down. Uh, got a bunch of Overwatch statues. Oh, that's very cool. And a case to display your Patrick Mahomes autographed football. Sweet. So I have a football that's autographed by Ron Jaworski and John Bon Jovi. Because they owned... Well, John Bon Jovi used to own the Philadelphia Soul Arena team. And I've got that up here. And then behind me in the office, um, I have a helmet signed by, by John Bon Jovi. Got a job as a junior.net dev. Says Strigoy. Strigoy? Congratulations. That is awesome. Big celebration for you. Where is it? Where is it? There we go. Love hearing folks that get their first their first job. Um, let's see what else do we have here. Uh, I'm going to get called out that I'm not an expert. Yeah, Hugo, that always feels terrible. You can give birthday gifts during uh, Sven Vandenbrand's uh, stream. It, it today's their birthday. Oh, congratulations! Art 9K got a Mackie Pro. That's the exact board that I have. The FX8 V2. I love that board. It's been terrific for me. Um, if for some reason you have to check it, they won't let it on the plane. Right. You need to eject the battery. Yes. Yes, yes. Um, it's it's really easy. You just push it down and it pops right out. Fairy Wings got no tech for Christmas. Well, that's sad. That's terrible, Fairy. Um... Yeah, gosh. No tech for winter mute either. Oh, sorry to hear that. Or Hugo. Um, I've, I'm, I know I'm fortunate like that, that I've got a, a family that's able to buy me tech to, <laughs> to get me some neat stuff. Um, but I hope you still had a good holiday. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, Eldorian got his wife Red Dead Redemption 2. Now, did you get your wife that or did you get that for you to play together? All in good time. Yes, absolutely. A handmade vortex glass globe. Ooh, that's cool. Send fairy wings more keycaps. <laughs> uh, no tech either, but I was able to get some nice new cycling gear. All right, there you go. That's cool. All right. I wanted to get to, I had a question that came in on Twitter. Let's take a look at this. This came in from Hackerspace Mumbai. And I think this is a, a good question that, that we can write a quick demo around and then show how it applies to some of our projects that we've been working on. And I feel like um, maybe early next week, I want to do like a year in review and kind of touch on each one of our projects and evaluate where to go from there. Uh, let's see here. I played video games, got to talk to Scott Hanselman. Well, Wintermute, that's, uh, that's pre pretty cool. You got to talk to, um... Scott! Him? Some good Belgian beer. Nice. Nice. Who is this Jason guy, and what does everyone keep talking about him? Buster first says. Yes. Now, I, I, I do need to reach out. Fairy Wings, I have, I've been having a real hard time finishing writing the tutorial that I wanted to work through with you. Can we... Do you mind if we reschedule? Will that work for you? Bought yourself a data science course. That's cool. Building and, and growing your career. Always great. If not, we can kind of... That's fine. We're, we are going to postpone a little bit. All right. Thank you, Fairy Wings. Um, almost as annoying as that Ruby chick. <laughs> Let's... So let's talk about this. Our friends at Hackerspace Mumbai, and I think they might, some of them might be here in the chat room, um, asked, uh, we're trying to convert an existing JavaScript project. So I know folks like Robert Tables and uh, Node Botanist have some experience in this, but trying to convert it to use .NET Core 2.1. Is there any of my Twitch videos or a public repository we can study on how to create a REST client that does the usual mapping and filtering of response JSON. So let me break that down a little bit for folks that aren't completely up to speed on what all that question means. Actually, let me zoom in a little bit there so you can see it. So, um, is F Sharp Fritz gone forever? Um, for now, I need to talk to my friends on the F Sharp team 
and uh, get my arms around uh, around a little bit that's going on there before we do that, before we do any more F-sharp. Found out yesterday giving your first lecture? Have no idea what you're doing. Ah, Tiago. That'll really help with imposter syndrome. When they say JavaScript, do they mean Node.js? I believe so, Sanat Meskin. Either JavaScript or, um, a, in this case, they're building a client. So I'm going to focus on on a JavaScript client that does this. Now, let me just break this down. You won 1500 for your first lecture? Winterbute, congratulations on that. Hello. That's nothing to... That Wow. That is phenomenal. And now... People know me. People know you. So the question here is is really around um, how to build a client, right? That's this is that uh, website or application that you're going to click into, you're going to interact with, and it's going to call a REST service, right? A REST service, um, REST is uh, uh, oh, oh my gosh, I'm blanking on the acronym for REST. Uh, acronym. Let me make sure I get this. Representational state transfer. So this typically uses an HTTP endpoint, right? HTTP, the Hypertext Transfer Protocol, the protocol that we use with our browsers to communicate to a web server. So a REST endpoint there is an endpoint that you can, it's, a, it's an address, it's a location on a web server that you can query with some sort of client piece of software. Like I said, an application, a mobile app, a Windows app, a Mac app, a desktop application, or maybe even a console application or JavaScript in the browser, you can interact with that. And the question is, they're using a JavaScript client currently to do that interaction with that web service. Well, how do you do that with .NET? Let's, uh, let's show how to do that with .NET Core 2.1. I'm gonna start a new console project and I'll show how to create a new HTTP client is the object we use in .NET to communicate and I think we'll use just one of the GitHub endpoints to show how to fetch data there. You can use node modules in the browser if you build the packages correctly, says Robert Tables. Okay. Good job, Wintermute. Yes. Um, yes, yes. You're less afraid of public speaking now. Representational. Thank you, Dojo God. Social engineering. A little bit. <laughs> Psychology of manipulation and its applications to information security. Oh, yeah. That's definitely social engineering. Uh, you've testified before state senate before. Ooh. Um, yeah, that is definite experience. Dnet seventy eight. Hello, hello. So let's uh, let's write a little um, a little client here that'll connect out and interact with the GitHub uh, endpoint. So um, if I look up the GitHub API, GitHub has that's version three. There's version four. There we go. Um, so there is an endpoint here that you can interact with. Um, uh, payload must contain, and then you need to pass a header. We don't need a header for what I'm trying to do. I just want to do a query of a, that's for GraphQL. No, maybe I do want the version three. There we go. Uh, oh crap. Um, one second here. Okay. So what you can do is you can go to apigithub.com. Uh, okay. And you're able to navigate down the various organizations on GitHub, right? So if I go API github.com, I get all kinds of information about the locations on GitHub that I can go and query and get some data um, about the different things that are going on on GitHub, right? GitHub's that source code repository where people stash their open source code. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Let's see, it's good since I'm not keen on speaking. Do IT companies need QA engineers? Asks uh, Joe O.Y. Of course, yes, yes, yes. But I think what you'll see is that folks, 
don't focus on just QA for their engineers. Um, they want folks to be well-rounded so that on a, on a scrum team, on a, um, everybody can kind of cover for each other. So they're looking for folks who aren't just QA, but can help with other tasks on the team as well. So it's, it's good to, to get a little bit of knowledge in programming in some of the other things there, but to be primarily QA with some of that extra knowledge is going to definitely help you. I learned to not be nervous doing public speaking after spending three years doing monthly safety training in a past position. Rooms full of people who didn't want to be there. Oh, Zath Zathras, 11. Yeah, I can, I can definitely see why that would help with uh, public speaking. Um, go outside your comfort zone. Yes, and that's one of the reasons that you see me streaming so much here is I'm, I'm trying to get more outside my comfort zone. You gave a lecture on computing ethics course in college and the professor of the course nominated you for a scholarship. That's awesome. I gave a similar version of the same le lecture that I regave to my school's chapter of the ACM, which is on YouTube. Um, Wintermute, if you'd like to share that link, please do to that YouTube video. Um, check out the GraphQL API for GitHub. I'm not a fan of GraphQL in general. Um, I, I think GraphQL is trying to solve a problem that was already solved, but brand it as Facebook. Uh, so I am not quite a fan of GraphQL. With Orchard Core GraphQL, you can write the APA, API yourself. Uh, with QA, we have people who can do some code, namely for test automation. Yes, test awesome automation is really a thing. So I want to um, take a look at how we can query. I'm going to go after the followers URL here. I want to go to this location, and instead of going user followers, um, I right, I should be able to go... C sharp Fritz followers. Nope. Hmm. Hmm. There's a way to go down through these. Right? So I can go to like a organization's URL, like this one. Right? And I can go to maybe Fritz and Friends. We created that organization. And here's information about that. I can get the list of repositories by going here. And this is a list of the project repositories that are out there. So there's the zero with and only repository at this point. So I'm going to write just a quick, uh, a quick bit of code to fetch this and turn it into something that we can use. And I think I should use Visual Studio Code today for this. So let's open that. Here's Visual Studio Code. Um, and I'm going to create a new project here. And we'll start building this little this little client that'll interact with that GitHub API. Um, followers need auth, I believe. Okay. Um, <laughs> all right. So let me go over. I'm going to go into my dev folder and uh, let's make a new directory here and let's call this uh, sample HTTP client. And I spelled that wrong. Are you kidding? Let's get rid of that. Try that again. Sample HTTP client. There we go. All right. Sample HTTP client. And I'm going to start a new project here. And we, we're using the .NET set of tools. We have the .NET SDK here. If I run .NET new, I'll get a list of all the different projects types that we can build. Oh my gosh. Um, I'm sorry. I don't know how to pronounce that name, but welcome. Um, I appreciate that. And I'm looking here to see if it's got the, just call you W. Okay. Welcome. I appreciate you joining us. Um, so I'm going to create a new project here. If I want to create a new client project, that's .NET Core. I can either create a web app because that will have .NET in it and I can make a .NET client, or I can quickly create a console application. And I'm going to start with a console application today. So I'll say .NET new console. And it'll create this inside of this folder where I ran .NET new. Take a look and you see it's just a program CS file. And then sample HTTP client CS proj. Now our CS proj, that's a project file that says here's all the various components, NuGet packages, 
um, libraries that I'm referencing and I need to pull together to build this C-sharp project. So let's now open this folder inside of Visual Studio Code. Open folder and I will go to that location. And now Visual Studio Code is going to reload and it, it has tooling in it for C-sharp for .NET Core so that I can use and interact with this code. So if I go to program CS, you see I've got right now, just at the beginning, hello world, right? And if I .NET run, it's going to build and output very quickly. Very quickly. 60% of the time, it works every time. And it worked, okay. Um, sure, go ahead and get my debug stuff. Thank you. Um, so it just outputs hello world, but we want to communicate with that API endpoint. Hey, Brave Cobra. Um, we're just building a quick sample here to show how to use the HTTP client to interact with, um, with, a, uh, what's it called? With, with a restful endpoint. Um, any tips for developer motivation? Um, asks Bo13. Hmm. That's a good question. Um, I like to take time time away from my code every now and again. Go for a walk. Walk the dog. Um, watch a movie um, before you get back into it. It's, it. When you're trying to get focused on a task that might seem daunting or annoying or just not motivating, something that you're not really um, engaged with, step away for a little bit think about it, write down some thoughts about what you could do, and then sit down and re-engage. I always try and get away. Um, so Nad Meskin starts with solutions first, then add projects. Meditation uh, recommends DNet 78. Yes. And Kevin says Pomodoro's time box your to-dos. That's another great one. Pomodoro technique is amazing. Uh, Hiox Zero, thank you so much for the follow. I appreciate you joining us. Brave Cobra has his best ideas on the toilet. What'd you do? I, I can't. I get really good ideas in the shower. Um, I don't know why that happens. Um, at night, while I'm enjoying a fine, a fine glass of Johnny Walker. Or uh, John Daniels, if you know him as well as I do, you call him John, not Jack. Um, just one in, so you're not completely lost. I uh, I definitely get some get some outside the box thinking happening. It, that definitely happens. I'm not suggesting that everybody drink, but getting figuring out how to lubricate your brain, if you will so that you start thinking outside the box and you start getting some interesting ideas, write them down. Yes, write them down as soon as possible. Shower, toilet, the car. Yes, driving in the car, right? And every phone has a, has a voice memo system. Turn that on and record your ideas. Dictate to it. Um, Dojo God. HTTP client is mostly set up async to avoid socket exhaustion. Oh, we're going to get very much into showing some of that. Yes, yes, yes. As much as I hate it, exercise is good. Absolutely, while you're on a run, while you're on the treadmill, or whatever. Um, but alcohol, I find, lubricates me a little bit. That's, like I said, it's not something that I go to a lot, but uh, it does it does help. But there's all kinds of ways that you can use. Uh, usually changes the original project and spins off small projects. Yes, that's another great way to look at this. Uh, most things exist already. That's okay, Rambling Geek. There's You can build a better mousetrap. So let me come back. Let's talk about this HTTP client. So instead of writing hello world, we're going we're gonna to create an HTTP client. We're going to interact with that GitHub API endpoint, and we're going to output some data from it. And there's a bunch of different ways to do this, and there's already a, uh, a tip there from, uh, where is it, Dojo God about uh, socket exhaustion, accessing secrets. Uh, you have to wrap it in an object. Well, let's, let's talk about that. Let's talk about all those. How much um, have we raised for 
uh, well, I what I donated. I forget how many how much I donated to you. That was that that was what you're raising for. Um, but I've been I've been raising money for Girl Develop It, and we've raised well over two thousand dollars for them. Well over. I donated five thousand bits. Did I? You raised five thousand bits. Terrific. Um, ta -ta -ta. that's awesome. Congratulations. Um, so that was Node Botanist's uh, charity that that they were raising money for. Rest Sharp was good for rest. I want to show how to do this with with the HTTP client. So I'm going to set up a a, a client as a new HTTP client. Now, the, when you're inside of a console application, you don't necessarily have something that's managing the life of your HTTP clients. Otherwise, you will run into thread exhaustion. <clears throat> the base way to interact with it, when you create one of these, you want to dispose of these when you're building a client application. When you're on a server application, when you're going to have many of these things, it's a little bit different, and we'll show that in just a second. ASP.NET Core does a tremendous job managing the state. So, yes, there are all kinds of libraries that wrap it. Rest Sharp, Floral. There you go. There's Winter Mute's talk. Fantastic. Thank you for sharing. I will copy that and put that into my list of uh, URLs here to watch later. Uh, what's my favorite development movie or maybe top five? Asks Bo13. Um, I'm always a big fan of War Games. War Games was a tremendous movie, but that's not really a development movie. It's more of a hacker movie. Um, I, I really enjoyed The Social Network, the story of Facebook. Um, I enjoyed... Um, Oh my gosh, what's the Hugh Jackman movie with Holly Berry? Um, I am blanking on the name of that. Revolution OS. Swordfish, that's the one. Thank you, Wintermute. Revolution OS. I don't remember that one. Thank you. Uh, Wintermute and Dojo God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you wow. go. That's what I remember. Swordfish, I think, is probably one of the top ones. The Matrix doesn't... It, that's not really a programming movie. But uh, seem to remember Microsoft Remen's HTTP client be one global instance. Hang on, we'll get there. We'll get there, Gunbert. Hackers was a, is a great one. Don't mention hacking the Gibson to blow dart. Don't do that. Yeah, Revolution OS. I do remember seeing that. Now that you mentioned it, that it was the development of Linux, I didn't. That's not a movie. That's more of a documentary. Terrific, but. It's not a fiction. It's not a... Right? Social Network is a bit of a documentary, but not really. Silicon Valley, yeah. Um, so if I set up HTTP client like this, which you can do and you won't exhaust when you're using it inside of an application like this, right? Because it's it's an endpoint. You're not, you're not saturating your network card because you're also the server. I can start specifying some of the properties for this client. So the base address that I'm going to go to is here to get information about the repositories. Now, base address is actually a URI. So let's make that a URI, not name of. You make me sad. Visual Studio Code. All right. Um, and then I can say, um, I can interact with it a whole bunch of different ways here. I can set additional headers here. Where is it? Uh, <laughs> um, Right, where's the headers? Default request headers. And then I can add some additional headers here. Accept, right? Expect from, I can set all kinds of things in here to interact with. And there's a way to set um, ones that aren't here. If I say add, you can add additional ones that properties aren't here. And I do that actually, if you look at my, well, I'll show you the existing code that I have that does this in a little bit. Um, but I do want to say, except, um, yeah, the media type, right? So 
So now it's giving me a red line here because it wants, cannot be used like a method. Okay, fine. Um, right, cannot be assigned to, it's read only. Well, where is it? I wanna say, um, I wanna accept text.json, right? Gets the value of the accept header, returns the value of the accept header for an HTTP request. Um, it's not, it's not accepting coding or accept language. Right, what am I thinking here? Matrix is Linux based. <laughs> uh, my top five books about programming, slash at the end of the URI. Is, it a, is there a slash at the end? No, there is no slash. Add it. Ah, there it is, thank you. Right, and now I can provide the media type with quality header. Ugh. All right. Media type. No, that's not it. I want to just provide like, right? Um, headers, media type with header, with header value. So if I copy that, paste that in there, I don't want that whole thing. That's going to be annoying. Uh, parse? Do I have to parse that? Ugh. All right. Application dot slash JSON. So that it knows that I'm actually doing, that I'm expecting JSON to come back. There we go. So I just added that using statement up here to the top. So now it should accept JSON. Parse add? There's a parse add? Oh, that would be so much easier. Thank you. Good call. All right. So now I've got my client. It knows how to interact with it. It's expecting application JSON to be returned. That's JSON format in case there's APIs that know how to do things like XML as well. Uh, there we go. Um, all right. So when I want to actually now fetch that data, now why am I on a different column? That's weird, right? I'm going to say client.getAsync. Now it's going to get it asynchronously and you can specify the URI at this point um, if you don't have a base address, right? I'm forcing everything to this same one. So I don't really care. It's going to the same. Um, I should probably do this and put this here. So now it's asynchronously going to get it. Now that get async is going to return a task, right? So this is kind of like promises that and async await that you see in JavaScript as well, but it'll return a task asynchronously. And that task contains markers, information about the pending request that's going on in the background. And it will return an output into this task object status information about it. So I can do things like say, wait for this to happen, do whatever, or I can force this back to asynchronous by saying, get a waiter, get the thing that's awaiting, and then uh, get result. So this will actually do the await and get the result. I'm not in an asynchronous method here. So it doesn't know to do that. DevLead is correct. In new versions of C Sharp, main can be async. So wanton violins, I can't, when, when this is a synchronous method, like it is now because it's just static void and I'm synchronous, I can't do an async here. I could do something, right? I could do something like task, um, right? If I, if I return this as a task like that, I can say, uh, task dot, and it's going to prompt me for namespace. I can say, uh, wait all on that task. And then I can get the result by saying task dot, uh, result. And now this will have, uh, task was canceled. Now it's now, no, it's going to be returning an HTTP response message, right? Right now I've got that message. I've done the await, waited for it to, right? I've gotten this asynchronously, wait for it to finish. So it'll actually block here. Nothing will go past this. And then I'll get the response message here. VTMR, hello, hello. 
Uh, Strigoi, thank you so much for the follow. Um, dot result does not do the same. You actually have to wait for it. Now, what some of the folks are suggesting is this can be async like this. But in order to do that, you need to tell you need to tell the project to use the latest version of C sharp. Now, uh, is it going to give me that? No. The indicator. Um, C sharp language version. It's um, select the C sharp language version. Here we go. It yeah manually edit the C sharp the CS proj file product group property group lang version latest. But I believe it's seven point two that appears in. I'm just going to tell it to go with the latest in the property group here. So this way it'll say go ahead and use the latest version. Why am I using code and not studio? Why not? Why not? Hey, Maker Blaker. So now, if I go back over here to my project, um, save that. Thank you. Instead of this, this, right, async void main lacks await operators will run synchronously. Well, that's because if I can now do this, And now this, instead of returning a task, returns that message. All right, so I'm getting asynchronously and I'm gonna receive this. And actually I don't wanna just get asynchronously. Let's get, let's get that, let's get that as a stream asynchronously. Uh, thanks, Visual Studio Code. All right, now, if I, now the next question is, well, how do I parse that into an object that I can actually work with? 7.1 says Parathon, thank you. Code's quicker. Eh. A little bit. I, I didn't want to get into showing any tools, kind of hiding things. So, all right, so we're returning. This isn't a task anymore. This is now a response. Uh, this is a stream, actually. Uh, let's call this response stream, so it's a little bit clearer what this is. Now, I want to turn that back into some sort of an object. There is, and I, I think I have the extension installed here, but the extension is also available in um, Visual Studio, full Visual Studio. There's an extension that you can use that will turn your objects, turn your JSON back into objects. Um, and I, I don't think I have it in this Visual Studio code. It's not a parameter team chat. No, no, no. Shoot. Uh, JSON, right, it's JSON, paste JSON as code, that's it. Copy JSON, paste as Go, TypeScript, C Sharp, C++, and more. This is phenomenal. Do task, not void. We'll get there, Devly. We'll get there. So while this is installing, I'll come back over here. You shouldn't, when you have an asynchronous method, you shouldn't return void. You should return a task. That way, it's got some sort of an indicator to manage that asynchronous task. So this is installing. Come on. What I'm going to do is uh, we should be coming back. Come on, come on, come on. There it is. I'm going to reload Visual Studio Code so it gets that extension. Thank you. Now I can grab the code over here. Now I've, I've got a formatter here so I can dig through this and see what this looks like. I'm going to grab the raw data so I have the raw JSON here. Copy all of that code. Come back over here to Visual Studio Code. Um, and I'm going to come right down here. And I should be able to do... Uh, huh, huh, huh. Paste JSON as code. Or paste JSON as types. Let's see what that one does. Top level name. Uh, let's call the top level name GitHub Organization. All right, namespace quick type. So it's importing Newtonsoft JSON. That's the typical JSON.NET parser that you'll see used by folks. Uh, but there's my GitHub organization, and here's all the properties that belong to it, all built out for me with the appropriate JSON properties and everything I need. And it keeps scrolling down here. It even has child objects, child types built out for me. GitHub organization from has a from JSON method 
has a two JSON method, settings, fantastic. Everything that I need right here. So what I'm going to do, I should be able to do, is uh, I'm gonna go all the way up to the top here. Come on. Grab this, I'm gonna control dot on it and I'm gonna move it to its own file. So you can see the file list there. So there's the GitHub organization. And uh, here's a partial class called license. Let's move that to another file. Owner, yep, go somewhere else. Permissions, you two, get out of here. Um, partial class for GitHub, oops, no, no, no. I'm gonna take you and put you in that same GitHub organization file. I just did a quick format there. Just, right, so that should fix, no, it didn't fix it, whatever. All right, now I've got some red lines here because it doesn't know what these things are. Let me control dot. Um, <laughs> and I've got an extra namespace. Let's get rid of that. Um, <laughs> take you, move you up here. I like my using statements up at the top. I'll look at the chat room here in just a second. So I've got this extra... That's fine. Make that look nice. All right, now, json.net is not part of this project yet, so we need to import json.net. I should be able to add package, no. Install, extensions, no. What is it for NuGet here? I thought there was a NuGet command. Hmm. <laughs> .net, nope. Okay, I'm gonna do this then the old fashioned way. Um, I believe it's not property group, it's item group. Item group. Does it have, nope. Hmm. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do package install. No, nope, package isn't here. Um, that's fine, we'll do this. Let's do this at the command line. So I did a control back tick to open the terminal down here. Come on, PowerShell. This shouldn't be this hard. Yep, paste special is in Visual Studio 2017. Um. <laughs> oh, you gotta try it out, Lennon. Yeah, yeah. Come on. This is taking its good old time here. That's annoying. Oh, thank you. Um, we should be able to .NET add package newtonsoft.json. And this will add that package. There it goes. It's going to grab the latest one, writing lock file to disk, restore completed. And if we look at that csproj file, nope, don't modify that. Now it has that package installed. All right. So that's done, and there's tools to do that automatically in Visual Studio 2017. But with that in place now, I can control dot on these and get my using statements. Looking in the tray over here, you can see where these red items are. That's where there's still things that it doesn't quite understand yet. So but that's an owner's object it doesn't know what to do with down here. License it doesn't know what to do with yet. Permissions it doesn't know what to do with. We'll fix those in just a minute. License is over here and it's in, yeah, it's in this extra namespace. So let's control dot and get that using statement in. URI it doesn't know what to do with. Just some quick control, sp control dots to get it to automatically find that and fill that out. So this file's clean, good. Don't need to think about that. Next one. Clean that up and control dot, get my using statement in here. I could have put the using statements in before I moved these files and it would have made it a little bit easier. I still have a red here. Ah, it's that bit, there we go. Good, owner's done, permissions. Da, da, da. A heck of a lot easier to do than 
trying to discover and figure out, well, what are all these things that I need to build? There we go. Permissions is done. All right, anything left over here? Let me get rid of that extra namespace so that everything's still in my namespace. Um, so here's a class called converter. Let's move that out, go somewhere else. Class called Serialize. Yeah, you go somewhere else too. We don't need you. Get rid of all that. Program is clean, no red here. Um, all right. I've got a red bit here. Where's that? Uh, I can get rid of that. Converter. Hmm, JSON convert deserialize, and it should be grabbing the converter objects settings. Well, converter's over here, internal static class. Let me fix up some of these. Uh huh. And date time styles. Did that help? Yes, it did. Cool. One less thing. All right. And my serialize. Need to fix that using statements. Good. All right. So now I think we're in a better place and I can convert. Didn't they build JSON directly into .NET Core yet? They're, they are working on it. Yep. Um, they, uh, the Visual Studio channel is... Um, I'll throw a shout out for that in here. Real easy to find. All right, so now I have, I have this message, this stream coming back. And you saw I've got a converter class over here um, that has settings that it's returning, but I can serialize and deserialize very easily here to JSON. Or, where is it? I can deserialize this as well. Right, so it's taking in, oh, it's taking in a string. No problem. So instead of returning this, instead of getting a stream, I'll get a string, not a sting. String. Let's call that a response string. So now I can turn that into a GitHub organization by saying GitHub organization dot from JSON. Response string. And now this contains an array of GitHub organizations. Um, let's, uh, let's take this outside of here. And let's say GitHub organization, let's say um, Fritz and fr uh, friends. Okay, and I know it's the first one of these. Let's do this. Fritz and friends equals that and the zero width. Cool. So now outside of here, I can do uh, console.out.writeline Fritz and friends dot, and then I've got all the URLs, right? So let's just grab full name. Um, found the organization. And we'll do some string like that. So it'll do string interpolation here. Everything inside the curly braces when the string is prefixed with a dollar gets turned into C-sharp code. So this, it'll execute and that string will get dumped right in the middle of this. Len and BR. Hashtag charity all around. Thank you so much for that. Very cool. That puts you, let's do this. Let's put, so we put... Um, we put cheers inside of our code here. So we have a cheer of 600 from Lennon. Let me make sure I spell your name right. BR on uh, 12, 1227, 2018. That cheer graffiti will just hang in there. We do have the cheer attribute. I don't want to attach it to this. Um, and because you cheered with that charity tag, $393,000 have been raised by direct for direct relief. That cheer tag means that 20 cents on 
that cheer will go directly to Direct Relief through Twitch. And of course, I'll make a donation to Girl Develop It based on that cheer as well. Thanks so much. I don't want to get into the cheer attribute just because that, that's going to complicate things. I want to make this a simple demo. So I'm going to write that and then I'll just do, I won't even do a, a read line. We'll just have it output that. Let's have, let's build this and make sure that everything works. So I'll use the terminal here in Visual Studio Code to build. <clears throat> blah, blah, blah. Build successful. Good. So now if I .NET run, it should run out to apigithub.com, reach into this repository, and it's telling me that that location is forbidden. Interesting. That should have worked. Hmm. Interesting. Why did it let me do it here? Is it because I'm logged in? Node botanist. Thank you so much for that kind cheer. Yeah. We'll drop that in here. Thanks so much for that kind cheer. <clears throat> I should have been able to get to this even when I'm not logged in. Let's go to a new private window. Let's see if it still gets there. It still gets there. Even though I'm not logged in. APIGethub.com, orgs, Fritz and Friends. And even if I go to repos, I still get it. Hmm. That's interesting. I think a forward slash at the on the endpoint is the problem. Is it this one? Let's see if that. Nope, still a 403 on that. Hmm. Yeah. Doesn't like it. I had this working and I have this working in another demo. Hmm. <clears throat> Let's see. Um, what do I want to do here? How should we do this? If I go like this, right, kind of reorganize how I'm doing that query. Is that going to grab it? Nope. Still a 403. Why is it giving me that? Hmm. And then if I go take it all the way down. Come on. Nope. So that's what you're seeing is a 403. GitHub is for some reason rejecting it. F12 to see the request. I can't F12 and see the request. Is the parse add messing with something? I hope not. Tell you what, let's even cancel that. Let's remove that. Grab this. I should have to tell it that I'm requesting JSON. No, still a 403. It's not this. Um, that's so interesting. Tell you what, I'm, yeah, I'm going to cheat. Um, because there is a demo that does do some of this. And it's under .NET Presentations. Uh, <laughs> and it was in the ASP.NET Core 2.1 workshop. And I, there's nine repositories here. Um, no, it's not in one of those workshops. Um, it's a workshop I used at build. I think we're missing some headers that GitHub is expecting or authenticate. No, we're not doing authenticate. We shouldn't need to authenticate. Uh, <laughs> I could skip the base address altogether. Let's try that. Let's. So if I comment... I'm going to copy that, comment this out. And if I just tell it, go get that location. Nope, still 403. That's weird. We did this at build and it was um, build 2018 
ASP.NET Core. It was like the two point ASP.NET Core 2.1 workshop. No, that's not the right one. No, 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 no. Because it was an hour long and I actually gave the presentation over uh, at Ignite and we did that also. Is it because Fritz and Friends is in caps? Uh, that's actually the correct location for it. Um, but fair enough, let's try forcing it to all lowercase. I don't think that's it. Yeah, that's not it. Um, see, because it's in caps here as well. Uh, yeah, that's different. I is it in my GitHub? I didn't think I put it in my GitHub. Uh, let's go back. More activity. <laughs> da, 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 da. No, no, no. There's September. If I had brought a copy of it local for Ignite, it would have been there. But I have a feeling I have a copy of it from Build, which was in May. Man, busy over the summer, wasn't I? Um, <laughs> May 5, ASP.NET Razor Auth with Photo. That was something that we worked on with Scott Hunter. I, no, I don't see it here. Nope. User agent, need a user agent. Do I need a user agent? Are you kidding? Uh, all APIs must include a user agent. Will be rejected. Oh! Oh! Mwammer. Why isn't that music playing? Ric Flair is not singing. Hmm. There he goes. Uh, so let's do this. Client dot default request headers. Um, it's not accept. It's user agent. There it is. User agent equals. And uh, let's call this uh, HTTP client. No. Let's call this Fritz and Friends. Now, it won't let me, it's read only. Do I have to, is there something here? Yeah, add. Fine, be that way. Um, add, I hate how that scrolls off the side. That's really annoying. Can I just make it a string? No. To product info header value, are you kidding? Product info header value parse. Yeah. Uh, need a, one of those. All right, now let's see if that works. Du, 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 du. Don't change the user agent. There it goes. Got it. Found the organization. Yeah, you can make this whatever you'd like. And it'll work. Uh, null obvious. What is this you're saying? I've probably already been asked this many times, but how much time did it take to get used to DuckDuckGo and Firefox? I really like DuckDuckGo. I'd really want to make it my default search engine, but it seems like sometimes I don't get the best results. Firefox works way slower than Chrome on my hardware, but you like Firefox more. Why does that happen to you? Don't know. Um... Yes, Lannan, there we go. We got this working. All right. Um, I'm a big fan of... Um, I already added media type with quality header. Uh, media type... Well, Parsad does the that whole thing. Right? It's a shortcut for that. 
it does uh it is very very simple for things like this very very simple so folks will wrap this and do different things so as a quick sample there it is it's fetching data and bring it back and if i make the base address let's see if that works now right this should work so if you make subsequent requests to different locations off of that right it's got this entire object built out it's hydrated with all the things that i need now i'm going to save this sample i'm going to create a repository here just in case you're looking for it i'll call this sample http client a simple dotnet core console application to demonstrate using HTTP client. Now, let's initialize with a readme and a gitignore for Visual Studio, uh, MIT. I don't need Dependabot and I don't need pipelines. Okay. And uh, we're gonna copy that location and I'm just going to um, git init here. And I'm going to git remote add origin that location. I'm going to pull that in. Origin master, track that upstream. There it goes. I'm going to add all my stuff to it. Uh, completed initial demo. Yeah, yeah. All right. I sign all my code. There it is. And now we'll push that back up. I don't. There we go. Cool. All right. So all that code that we just wrote is now available. Prince Charming. Thank you for your contributions to the community. Happy holidays. Thank you so much, Prince Charming. Um, we'll make a donation to Girl Develop It based on that. And uh, fantastic. Thank you so, so much. In PowerShell, you can use, you can force it to use the TLS. Yes, yes, yes. Um, so real quick, before I get too far here, let me just drop in one more here from Prince Charming. Thanks so much. Uh, let's include that. Added cheer from Prince Charming. Very cool. Thank you so much. So many cheers. Absolutely. All right. So that's the simple code to do that. Now, there are ways, and there was some comments earlier about doing this asynchronously and making sure that you don't exhaust your network connection. When you're particularly running inside of an ASP.NET Core application, you want to run a little bit as a singleton. You want to have the state of it managed. And I have some samples that do that inside of my uh, Stream Tools project. So Prince Charming, thanks so much for the cheer. Cut, cut, oh, wow, Kato Koki, thanks so much for joining us. Or is it Kato Koki? Been lurking for a while, just started following. I appreciate the follow. Um, thank you so much. We're at 4640 followers. I've got some time till I need to dye this beard. No problem. I do have some examples about how to use the HTTP client a little bit differently. Um, available inside my Stream Tools project. And they're a little bit more advanced. And I wanted to show the simple scenario before I showed you a little bit of what's going on in here. So inside Stream Tools, um, I configure all of my HTTP um, client information down here in Configure Services. And I actually have a, a piece here that goes and connects to GitHub. Compunutter. Compunutter. <laughs> Thanks so much for the follow. I appreciate that. Uh, Port exhaustion based on some samples. So, and this is the way to get around that. So inside of 
ASP.NET Core, we have this iService collection that manages all of the instances of your ASP.NET, um, all of your ASP.NET dependencies and injects them appropriately. Well, this will manage them. It manages your HTTP clients. And there's now a, an extension method called add HTTP client. And what you can do is you can, th there's several different things here. You can have a named HTTP client like GitHub that you create and you have configuration you pass in. So things like, well, here's my base address, here's my default request headers, and add this information in there. Wow, the follow train is strong today. Dust Ward, and then here's one coming for Salzian. Thanks so much for the follows. I appreciate your folks joining us. And I look forward to see seeing you in the chat room. Does anyone know of a comprehensive book on Core MVC 2.1? Asks Wintermute. No. The problem with books is it takes about a better part of a six six months to a year to write them and by the time that you're done writing that the next version is out you won't find comprehensive books on that it, it just takes too long heroxis or heroesis correct me on how to pronounce that thanks so much for the twitch prime subscription i appreciate you joining us and we'll make donations to girl develop it based on that so by doing this add HTTP client, when you request an HTTP client later inside your application and you request this name, it's already got this configuration and it will give you that capability and manage the number of those clients for that named type. Now as a named type, that's nice. It's very weakly typed. You get an HTTP client object that does that and it's it's so-so. It does, it does the thing. Um, but there's another one now. So here we're doing the same thing with the shout out command to, to interact with that. I thought I had a strongly typed HTTP client in here. Um, do I have that somewhere? Is it in one of my other samples? It's not in stream tools. It's probably not in core wiki. Do we, um, let me come back to your question, Brave Cobra. There's, um, in the docs, you'll see this. Um, and there was, to the question about um, using DuckDuckGo, right? You can actually do things like this and say, um, and say HTTP client, and it'll search specifically that site and if you don't like these results from DuckDuckGo and you want it to go to Google just give it an exclamation point G and DuckDuckGo will route you over to Google maybe you don't like Google maybe you like Bing exclamation point B and it'll route to Bing DuckDuckGo does this for you maybe you want to search Amazon for that because you're looking for a product exclamation point A and it'll search there as well there's all kinds of little exclamation point commands. And I forget who had the questions about DuckDuckGo. No obvious. So try that. There's Check out on DuckDuckGo, there's, there's a cheat sheet, bang search shortcuts. Check out all the different, almost 10,000 of these. Right? So Google search, if I go search, here's all the different searches that you can force DuckDuckGo to instead of DuckDuckGo. If you just wanted to research and search, search Hotbot. Hotbot? Do it! All right, we'll search Hotbot. And it'll reroute and search Hotbot. Who knew? Now, BraveCurber is asking, do we have a graph? Do we have some sort of data point? So there is... And I'll finish that search and show the the thing there. Um, Twitch follower data. Oh, there it was. Uh, social blade. So if you go to social blade, and if you key in my name, oh, it says. Look at how lame it says I am. B minus. B minus my foot. There's the data, or there is future projections up here. So, 
two months. We'll hit this prediction for various milestones if you click that. 5,000, it says we'll hit on February 1st is what it projects. And there's a nice little graph and video views. So um, check it out, socialblade.com. The developers for Social Blade are uh, Twitch developers. They're, they're in the Twitch developer community and you can find them. Um, yes, our friend Steve Smith, he's been on here a number of times with us. Uh, he has a couple, um, they're eBooks that he's been writing. It's a lot easier to mock and unit test HTTP calls than it used to be. Yes, and what I'm trying to get to, oh my gosh, PyroLock. Thanks for the follow. Um, let me back up here and go to that. What I want to show you is the HTTP client. It's There's a strongly typed HTTP client structure that you can use. Um, <laughs> you may want to see this. Uh, sure, we'll look at that one. Let's start over here. Uh, da -da -da. So, consumption patterns. Uh, typed clients, here we go. So, I check out check out this. A little over a month to go. Maybe. Maybe. Yes, so Steve Smith and a couple other folks on that team, they are building some ebooks that, that will keep up, but they're not they're not published by, by somebody that you're used to seeing. McNuggets 10. Uh Oh, Bang YT will take you into um, into YouTube search. I'm into nuggets, y'all. I'm into nuggets, y'all. I'm into nuggets, y'all. I'm into nuggets, y'all. Okay, I got to mute that before our Twitch comes down on me. Um, welcome, McNuggets. Great to see you. HTTP Client Factory. So that's... An Let me get to there. Um... You can create your own class that receives an HTTP client and it will pass into you a, a client. You register this type client with ASP.NET Core and then you'll always have this object. Now, what's interesting about this and what some of the folks were saying is you can unit test this then by passing in a faux HTTP client to go and, and you could say, oh yeah, it's doing the interaction or right, you turn this uh, this class into an interface so that you can pass that into various things as a unit testable pattern. But there you go. You say add HTTP client and then that class object and you can pass that around and it'll manage the life cycle of that so that you don't exhaust the network. And it does a pretty good job of that as well. Now Eldorian is saying I use the HTTP client factory method. Um, you can create the client factory yourself and manage it and it will take care of that. But check out this page in the documentation and this will get you the answers that you're looking for. I've been in for an hour and a half here. Yeah, and I think we've done some pretty neat things. Keep it up in five more years. I'll have 24,000 followers by then. Now, stop it, Brave Cobra. What? And you blow it! Come on now. We're not going to go that far. Uh, thanks so much for joining us, Sinad Meskin. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Okay. So that's a bit around HTTP client. You can use uh, Poly to resiliently uh, handle transaction faults and do retries on a regular basis um, to make sure that you get something in case the service on the other end goes down. All kinds of different configuration and capabilities that you can do there. Logging you can set up with this. Okay. So really, really great stuff. They've done a, they've done a tremendous job with this. So check that out and that will get you what you need, I believe, around building HTTP clients and interacting with it. All right. So that's for our friends at Hackerspace Mumbai. I hope I answered your questions and, and got you there. Hey, Malfunct. Hello, hello. Yes, Polly is pretty cool. Um, all right. I want to talk about 
So I've, I've dipped into stream tools here, and this is the project that we've been working on recently. We're building various features onto, um, onto the stream. It's very meta. Um, it makes building API clients that much easier. Very cool. So we've been doing this very meta interaction here, building tools for the stream, including these numbers that you see here below me, the 46, 44, and the 103. Those are numbers that are being queried, fetched with an ASP.NET Core service. You saw it. Uh, it's inside this project, Stream Tools. This project, Stream Tools. Ah, so you got to point at the right place, Jeff. And uh, no problem, Dojo God. Um, Always happy to answer questions here live on stream and and get folks the the help they need. Um, and please, if there's if there's anything we need to follow up on, uh, drop me a line on Twitter. I'm always here uh, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturdays. Um, Saturday. Well, I'm going to be Saturday this week, but I'm moving to Sunday on a regular basis. So, went to user group the other day where the presenter was talking about Polly, not realizing the creator was in the audience. Oops. Oh my, is right, um, right, and then you you want to reach out and you want to you want to say to them, throw me a freaking bone here. You know, if there's something I'm saying wrong, help me out. You know, um, so we've been working on this very meta project here. Oh, it also does this stream tools project also does the rainbow beard gauge that you see over there and the GitHub tracker up at the top. So, hey. There's Ellie Face. Hello, good morning. Ron Crease, welcome. I appreciate you joining us. Uh, didn't go to evil medical school to be called Mr. Evil. Yes, that's right, Winter Mute. So we've been slowly building the, these additional features in with this Stream Tools project. And the, all of the projects that we work on here on, on the stream are completely open source. You're welcome to contribute if you see an issue, if there's something that you think that you can improve, even if you don't think you can improve it, but you want to write some code that you'd like us to review and discuss here on stream. I think you've seen, we're not intimidating. Nobody here is a bully. And if they were to bully in the chat room, it can be done exactly how I want it. The only question is, are you the man to do it? Darn right I'm the man to do it. We're going to punch you out of here. Because bullying in the chat room... It's illegal in nine countries. It's illegal in nine countries. Um, no, Ellie Face, you are not a bully. No. Absolutely not. You can do it! No, not you. You're a moderator. Fight you. Uh, no. Don't need to. Um... We're, we're doing just fine here. You're about to get a serious beat down. No, no, we're not going there. Not at all. I want to talk more about the Stream Tools project. And then? We're going to write a little bit of code for it. And I want to show off this this blog post that we uh, was just released by our friend Mads, Torgerson, Mads Christensen. And then? Well, we'll install the extension and we'll talk a little bit about, about fixing, uh, fixing and improving the extension that we're working on. Um, I don't know. We'll see what happens. All right. Then. No more and then. And then. No more and then. And then. And then we'll raid somebody else a little bit later. How's that sound? All right. Hey, Ace Flame Seer. Good to see you. Car full of bananas, kind of bully. Oh no, 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 no. Mods are watching. I love how Node Botanist says this. The mods are watching. Always watching. Uh, yeah. We're going to do it live. Here we go. So um, we've been building this Visual Studio extension that will allow you in the chat room to send code directly into my Visual Studio while it's running. And here's the project. We've been slowly adding features. So um, we've been tuning the Fritzbot. We've got a couple issues out there that we need to address. But there's you'll see the Fritzbot in the chat room. It's... It's uh, listening and looking for the code command. Now, it's not running right now. And actually, did I? Did I close? No. There it is. Um, but it, it's the version that has this feature is not installed. Um, so my Visual Studio extension that I'm building locally 
will take your code and pop it into the error list window. And we've we've started working through some of this validation. And actually, I should have checked off some of these things. Hang on. How do we... Let's go to the issue. So we, we need to handle... And we're working through this. Project folder file path explicit search. Um, but ensure the file exists in the solution. Whisper if it doesn't exist. We've got that working. Well, we don't have it whispering, but we have it doing the ensure and raising an issue. Um, and then we need to also check to see if the line number suggested exists in the file. So, uh, let's see here. Best mods. You're stealing a joke? Yeah, there was a, an issue in another channel. 4chan decided to raid another channel and uh, it was not pretty. So, this was a blog post written by our friend Mads Christensen. And, uh, oh, let me come to that comment in, in a second here. Um, about using extensions to help you build Visual Studio extensions. So this is an extension pack called Extensibility Essentials that gives you a whole bunch of different things here to help make your extension building experience better. Known monikers, V6, Synchronizer, Registry Explorer, Insert Good, Image Manifest Tools. Okay, pretty good set of stuff here. Um, so I'm going to drop out of Visual Studio Code and we're going to flip back to full Visual Studio and I'm going to open our Stream Tools project. There it goes. While that's opening, West Dude 3 asks, I'm 13. Oh, welcome. Uh, and you've been learning programming since June. I learned C Sharp and Java through tutorials and I've made some small things like calculators and conversion programs. Fantastic. That's a great start. But I don't know what to make or program. Like, I don't know what project to make. What's your way to get project ideas? Um, wow, West dude. That's a, that's a really good question. Where do we get project ideas? Um, I get project ideas by looking around me. Looking at the things that, that, I, that I, as a lazy developer, don't want to do... Um, by hand, right? If there's something that I'm I'm doing um, frequently by hand, that's something I want to automate. Um, <laughs> Wintermute had the same questions. Yes, um, it's a uh, so th th right. What are the things that you're interested in that you th that you right? I I play with things here on on the stream, right? I I do work putting together data. Brave Cobra had a great question there around, it'd be great if we had um, if we had some data that we could get to to interact with around the stream, right? And that's kind of meta me trying to solve problems to make managing my stream better, right? That's kind of what I work on. But for you, it, it might be, I don't know, a way to keep um, at, at some point college applications organized, right? Tobo Nautilus, thanks so much for that subscription with your Twitch Prime. I really appreciate that. Um, whatever it is, right? If there's something around you that you're doing on a regular basis, um, or right, you could interact with with the Amazon Echo. Maybe there's something you'd like to be able to say to your to your Echo Dot, right? Or or right, the Echo device to get it to to search for something or do some sort of a task for you. What's something that you do on a regular basis that's that's annoying, that's yak shaving, that, that bothers you, that, oh, I gotta go look this thing up again, right? There's things like that that might be interesting. There, there's a good uh, suggestion from Brave Cobra. Help, code to help with gaming. Always better at coding than gaming. Um, yes, everybody gets obsessed with something when they're a teenager. Oh, you know what I was obsessed with as a teenager? I was obsessed with comic books. I was... That's me. I was, I, I was buying all the X Men comic books. Um, I was reading Superman for a while. I can't stand Superman now. Fight me. I can't stand Superman. Okay, but you need small little apps to to build to work with. I would have written a little app just to track my uh, my comic books when I was when I was a kid. Um, I would have written a, a calendar to track when I was working. But now we have apps on our phone and things that do that automatically. But starts, uh, that's a great point there, uh, Uk Pika Australis. Start small. You don't need a huge project, absolutely. Comic books, you'll never get anywhere in the real world like that. 
Geek and Sundry. Yes. Yes. You know what? And, oh, shoot. Shoot, shoot, shoot. They're in the other room. Um, I picked up this week's Marvel Comics, and there's an amazing tribute to Stan Lee in it. And I wanted to read it here online. Um, you set your Echo to be activated by Echo, so I... Oh, sorry. My bad. But start small. Build things. Build... We, we have a, a phrase that we use called um, minimum mm, minimum viable product. I got that right. So the minimum viable product is what is what's the minimum you need to accomplish whatever task it is that you want your application to solve. And it doesn't need to be a mobile application. It can be a website. It can be just a console application or maybe a, a desktop application. Make it work, then make it good. Great advice there from Robert Tables. A mech warrior thing. Oh, awesome! Yeah! Um, read mostly Donald Duck comics. Wrote a crud app at 15 to track how many books I've read through the year. There you go. So, the, I think the point here, uh, Wes, dude, is is to just... To, to think... You don't need to solve the world. You don't need to invent the next Facebook. Start with something small that, that solves a problem for you. Maybe it's organizing your music. You know, whatever. Um, but, but think about it. Spend some time around it and, and write a little bit of code and you'll get inspired. You'll figure out features A, B, and C. And you'll be like, oh my gosh, you know what? I'd love to build feature D. Feature E, and you see that you'll see that happen on stream here. Where we'll get through some things, and we'll find figure out. Oh my gosh, it'd be great if we could do this. Here, a great example of that type of um, kind of organic growth and and inspiration happened while we were building this project to to get pictures of my oil tank in the basement, my hideous old beat up oil tank in the basement, and identify um, the volume of oil in the tank. And this is a Raspberry Pi, this thing, that'll be plugged in with a camera. It'll take a picture, upload that picture, and uh, a, f a function analyzes, pulls off the number that's on it, and, and then uh, log that number for reporting in some other applications. And there's a video here you can go to and see it. Now, um, it is not in production. Production being my basement. My basement is production? Yeah, get back to that. So a bunch of folks, as they were watching, said, here's some pretty cool ideas that might be fun to do. And there were things, as we're building this, like, it'd be great if you could send a text message or even automate a phone call to the oil company to, to say, hey, we're low on oil. Or send a notification to my Amazon Echo. So, sorry. So that it wakes up and says, hey, you're, you've only got 30 gallons left. Um, and Hugo even said, you know what? Oh my gosh, be great if we had alerts at various levels. Maybe I send an email at, at something and then a text message or we send them on some frequency, right? And then here, Hugo even said, let's, let's try to predict based on the weather, you know, and how much oil is used when the weather is a certain thing. Let's try to predict how much oil is going to be used in the future. Really, really neat ideas. But it's it's a thing that has kind of grown out of just the simple problem of, I want to know how much oil is in the basement so I can put it on my watch, put it on my phone so I can see, because I'm, I'm lazy, I'm a developer, I don't want to have to go into the basement and measure this thing. So we get this inspiration by building just a little bit of code and then you see, oh my gosh, I can automate this. Okay? Push it to the basement. The cloud, it's in my basement. I hope there isn't a cloud in my basement. That means there's a problem. Raspberry Pis and Arduinos are a great way to get back to simple computers like the ones when professionals started coding. And uh, I'm, all right, great segue. That's some of the neat stuff that our friend Node Botanist does where they're taking these little, these little uh, circuit boards and, and putting them together to, to solve a little bit of a problem, right? More than just, let's light up an LED. Let's hook up to a sensor and do something. 
add an appointment in your calendar to call the oil company at a certain level. That's a there's another cool idea, Brave Cobra. Yeah. So I think we're going to come back to this project in the next week or so. What I need to wire up. And it is no botanist still here? Are they still here? Yeah, no botanist still still here. Tell me, tell me if this is something that's possible. I have a U. I don't see it here on my desk. It must be on the shelf behind me. Um, I have a USB based light, right? A light that you might plug in so that you can see your keyboard or whatever. What I'm thinking, listening. See that node botanist is listening. For real though, node botanist. But what I do have. They've got a very particular set of skills. They've acquired over a very long career. Very long career. They've acquired them and they're able to kill things. No. Um, anyways, so what I'm thinking is have that USB based light, right? And I've got four USB on the back of the Raspberry Pi. You can see it there. So I'll plug into one of them, the camera. But if I plug in that light into another, it's a USB based light. Can I control the power so that I turn it on? right before I take the picture, right? Because if, if it's dark in the basement, you won't be able to see it. And then after I take the picture, turn it off. I think that, right? I, just so I have proper lighting. And then what I need to do is I need to talk to, to somebody who can help, help me with 3D printing and build a clamp to mount this and the camera on the tank. And then the physical piece of actually getting this hooked up will be done. And then we can look at some of the analysis and other things there. It's always dark in production, says Brave Cobra. Uh, maybe. You need a script to turn off power to that USB port. Yes, yes. That's exactly what I was thinking. If the USB port is, is just a power thing for one of those USB-based lights, right? So I'm thinking, uh, it's, right, it's, a, it's a USB light. Um, it, uh, not like that. Not like that. Ah, it's like this one. But it's not, it's not the daffodil. But I have something like this, where it's basically a light that you plug into a USB port and it lights up. You can turn that off. I, it's power, right? Can you turn on and off power? Five, five volts goes through the cord no matter what. You want a relay controlled by an Arduino. Ah. So can I use the MX chip to drive that then? All right, more thinking. More thinking needs to be done. Hence the comment about the ESP8266. Okay, okay, maybe. So, right, the ideas just start flowing, right? And how do we make these things happen? I'm gonna add an issue here. Uh, need to activate a light source. The basement is dark. Need a light so that the camera can see the... I hope you've had a great holiday. Hey, Banifis. Um, I had a great holiday, yes. We started off talking about a couple of little gadgets that I got here for, for the holiday for Christmas. Can we build it? Uh, I don't have a can we build it. It can be done exactly how I want it. The only question is, are yeah. you the man to do it? Of course I'm the man to do it. We will do it. Benefits, thanks so much for that subscription. I really appreciate that. Seven months in a row. That is phenomenal. Thank you. Still one of us. Yes, yes. Noopcat should know the details. Um, quick note, Noopcat is with a K, not a C. But... We got it. Maybe plug it into your electric box and just turn the light of the basement itself. <gasps> Brave Cobra, that's an interesting idea because then we could do... See, now look at this. I'm, going, I'm off on a tangent here. Then we could do something like a Wemo. Right? One of these doodads. So if I plugged a light in there, then I can just hit the Wemo endpoint and tell it turn on the light. If it's just a lamp. I mean, literally a lamp sitting there we're talking low tech we're talking let's let's just bodge this all together right that that was a very english thing for me to say looks like you can control powers to the usb ports on the raspberry pi that would be the way i'd want to go <laughs> thank you brave cobra for bringing that full circle yeah 
there's all kinds of brainstorming here, but I have this, I have a camera, I have the pie. If I can figure out how to get the light into the mix, then I've got it. Uh, so malfunct, do me a favor. Um, if you have a link to that doc, can you, uh, yeah, can you put that link into the, um, into the GitHub repository for that issue. So here's oil tank vision and under issues. Need to activate a light source. AAV, thanks so much for joining us. No problem. What are we building? Uh, there's the issue that we're talking on. A servo with a string and a small stick to flip the switch. Now Prince Charming is talking about doing the whole mousetrap thing here. The Kevin McAllister myth. It's very Rube Goldbergian. Right? I made this joke about Mousetrap, the Mousetrap game. Right? You, did you ever play this when you were a kid? No. No. The Mousetrap game. There it is. Right? Um, where you've got this very convoluted series of things that all have to happen in order to catch a mouse. Right? Eventually this cage falls down and tries to catch a mouse. But you always have, th there's this, where is it? There's a dude that flips. Right in there, you can see the little dude. There he is. Right? You you put the dude on this spot over here, and a ball drops out of the bathtub. The dude flips into this tub, and it drops the cage. That's... I feel like that's what we're going to end up building. You know? We need a fan to blow out the candle. Stop that! <laughs> oh my gosh! Inconceivable! It's getting very confusing now. All right, so the question we had from... Couldn't you wire the 5 volts from the USB lamp to the GPIO part? We could do that. Hey, Jay Rosegard. Good to see you. Uh, AAV, what are we working on? So so this is a little bit from the project that we were locking on. There we go. Thanks so much, Malfunct. I, I appreciate you sharing that so we can look at that in a future stream and, and build this a little bit more. Um... If I had the light handy, do it. Is it here? I thought it was here. Is it on my shelf? All right. I will. I will assemble the gear, and I think tomorrow we'll work further on this Raspberry Pi. Um, because I really like where this conversation is going, but I just don't have the gear all right here in front of me. Oh, no, it is here. Ha <laughs> ha, it fell on the floor. Here it is. So this was... Th this was swag from... Who is this? The Network. All right, whatever. Um, it's still got a little piece of plastic on it. Let's get rid of that. So you can see it's a... Let me, let me zoom out here a little bit so you can see. Uh, hi, how you doing? So this is... Right, it, it's a... It's a light on this side, okay? And there's a USB-A connector on that side. So what I'm thinking is, right? Plug this deal in here. And then, right, because it's got this flexible thing, I can kind of use this to light the gauge. And if what Malfunct is suggesting here works, you can't perform the ad action at this time. Bull donkey. Um, turn USB, do you? If there's a command to turn off the power on any of the attached USB devices, use an inline hardware switch. This might be enough. Echo 0x0 zero zero onto that to disable. Now, will that disable all of them? I only want to disable one because I don't want to disable the camera. So I do need to put in a little bit of extra configuration here on the stream so that you can see the Raspberry Pi. So let me come back to this tomorrow. I'll get that configuration up and running. And I think tomorrow we'll do some Raspberry Pi work and we can get this running. You'll need to make a, you'll need to have a beefy power supply for the Pi. Beefy? What do you mean beefy? Rolling on the floor. I, I bought what you said about the mousetrap game. It is. It's very mousetrap. Look at, look at how this thing works. Right? So go back here, right? It does these four steps. Wake up, take a picture, upload the picture to Azure. Serverless function wakes up, sends it to cognitive services for analysis, detects the number, 
and then save it into table storage. It's very, very Rube Goldbergian. Yeah, Rube Goldbergian. There you go. Right? Um, Rube Goldberg. Right? And Rube Goldberg, right, was a... Right, was a... Um, cartoonist, sculptor, author, engineer designed all these funny machines. Not this guy who had this theme. That's a different Goldberg, right? No, different Goldberg. That That's the wrestler. We're, we're not talking about him. Um, but this Goldberg... No, don't play my intro. And now I stop the music. Oh my gosh. Too much going on. Here we go. Um, so designed all these weird machines that would do just crazy, crazy things, right? All kinds of stuff that they weren't, right? Weren't designed to do self-operating napkin. Look at this, right? Moves his elbow and it triggers a thing that throws up here and a bird will reach out and grab that. And it spins this, that does a thing over here. And eventually, look, there's a rocket that takes off, cuts a wire, that eventually wipes his face. That is just plain, plain stupid. Throwing an animated GIF in that website could have been made on GeoCities. <laughs> Maybe. Um, what a British phrase. Yeah. The summary of what's on that page is that you can turn off power to the internal USB via software. Fantastic. The, the issue that we need to address... Hmm... Hmm. Um, Mrs. C. Sharp Fritz's. Ah, she's got a quick question for me. Uh, let me answer this real quick. Um, there we go. Uh, there we go. Right? Are we all good there? Okay. Um, so let's see here. Maybe some frames. No. IoT fridge tracker. That would be neat to build, but no, don't need that. The USB hub, so all its ports are all are on. So that means it would turn off the camera also. Hmm. That might be too much. Triple Fun says, hello, just came in here. Why don't you use Ar an Arduino for this? Um, I could use an Arduino. I have, I'm using a Raspberry Pi. Um, so, right, that would be a second device. I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to use one device. And the, the comment here about activating a light source. So this looks like it turns off the entire, all USB off, including built-in Ethernet. Mm, that might be a little bit too much to turn on and off um, because I, I need the camera working. I want to take the picture and then with the, oh no, wait a sec. I need to turn the light on. Oh, wait a sec. Wait a sec. I, I like how you're talking to the fridge there, Robert Tables and Node Botanist. Might want to start an FAQ at this point. Let's, hmm. let's think about this. So, um, right, so we're going to wake up, we're going to uh, wake up on a scheduled basis. Um, turn on the USB, including the light and the camera, because they both need to be on at the same time. Take the picture. Um, save it to disk. Uh, turn off the USB. I think we're okay with this. I think we're okay with this. We might not need this. No, what is that? What's that GitHub uh, link? Where are we going here? Some sort of a cron library. Well, we can use the cron on the Pi. USB hub per port power control. Well, I think we might we might not need it. Hmm. Uh, we don't need that mousetrap. 
So just finishing thinking this through, we can turn off the USB um, and upload to Azure. I think that works. All right, thanks so much for joining us, Malfunct. Arduino is more expensive than Raspberry Pi now that the Pi Zero is out and gives you less computing power than the Pi. The only reason you use Arduino is if you can't afford boot time of the Raspberry Pi. Yeah, I, I don't... I'm not sure I, I care about the boot time. Um, low power stuff is still easier on Arduino. Okay. Um, I, so just thinking through and talking through what it is that we need it to do. So, um, our friend Noopcat, Noopcat helped us with this part. Take the picture, save it to disk, and then upload to Azure. So what we and what we need to do is this is a cron job to wake up. We'll wake it up like every four hours or something, um, and then we'll turn on the USB and then turn off. So if the USB has the light and the camera in it, it'll turn everything on at once. Take the picture. Save it to disk, turn everything off, and then we're good. Yeah, I think we're, I think it'll work. It's pronounced no, wait, no opcat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, I think it sounds funnier when you say noopcat. You know what I mean? I know it's no opcat. It's a, it's a Unix thing. But it sounds funnier saying noopcat. All right. Um... Let me let me clear up my desk. Let me get my gear together here so that I can show you the Raspberry Pi screen as we're building this tomorrow. And maybe we can do that last piece here. No op from assembly. Yep, I know. All right, um, that's very cool. I think we're we're in a really good place with this now. Thanks so much, Malfunct, for that link. Um, so it's just, it's an echo to that. Yeah, that's part of the cron job then. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh man, this couldn't, oh, you know what? I'm just gonna, I'm gonna copy this and paste it into uh, here. Now uh, let's do it as a separate command, a separate comment. Um, just paste that in so that I have it. Yeah, I think we can build this. If if somebody's interested, um, you can uh, and, and wants to build the cron job that that does this along with and the the JavaScript code is right here on in this Pi script bit. If somebody wants to build the cron job that goes along with this and stash it on the code. You're more than welcome to, and we'll take a look at that code on tomorrow's stream. Uh, Sky High AF2, uh, thanks so much for the follow. I appreciate you joining us here. Um, how would you test it without the hardware? I don't know. That's just it, right? I, I'm going to need to walk through that hardware and, and get that... Right, I want to be able to show you that and show it working here. So I need to uh, I need to get stuff hooked up here so we can actually work with the Pi. Uh, what will you use as a visual? Um, I have some. Yeah, mock the hardware is a little bit tricky to do at this point. Um, but what I think we can do, I, I have some pictures of the gauge that we can kind of set up and test with. Um, all right. You know what? I think, I think we're about out of time. Yeah, we're, we're over when I wanted to run until. So we didn't get down into the Visual Studio extension, but I'm thrilled with the conversation around this device. I think we need to go after that tomorrow a little bit. That'll be a lot of fun building and working on that. Um, yeah, the Fritzbot shouldn't have answered. Shouldn't have tried to answer that question. Oh, Azure Services did not respond in time to that question. Mm, all right. Uh, let's see here. 
Uh, one of my local Microsofties has a demo where she takes a photo of a fruit with a pie, uploads it to Azure, displays an emoji based on Azure Cognitive Services. Yes, I've seen I've seen those demos. They're very neat. So yeah, tomorrow we'll I think we'll work with the pie and we'll try and get we'll try and get past this little little bit here with turning the light on and off and getting a reliable picture, and then I can mount it in my basement and start actually doing that. Um, all right, let's. Uh, Let's wind things down here. Let's use out there streaming if there's somebody. Um, what project will you build this in? Raspberry Pi doesn't work with everything in Visual Studio. Ask Triple Fun. I'll use Visual Studio Code along with a little bit of Node that our friend uh, Noopcat wrote. And we'll, uh, we'll work with that a little bit. An RPI project for monitoring your oil tank. That's awesome. Just about, just about to start working on an RPI project for monitoring the state of my garage door. There you go. Um, the video for this, in case you're looking for it. So it's it has been archived. It's available on my YouTube channel. I should update the readme. But it's down here. I don't want to play all. I just wanted to look at the hey. playlist. Hey, it's some guy from Wix. Uh, da -da -da, there it is. Hi, who are you? Best iOS development course. No. Go away. There it is. So this is from when we were working together in Las Vegas at Dev Intersection. So the YouTube video about the oil tank is there. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll update the readme here so it includes that. Let's see who's out there streaming in science and technology that we can raid. Uh, let's see here. Who's doing something cool that we can continue with? Cosmos and uh, Carl Sagan are out there broadcasting. Mm. Uh, let's see. Rev Chumley, 3D printer repair. Mm. Uh, Angular CLI with a SignalR app. Ooh, that sounds interesting. No, Code Rushed is not streaming right now. I'm, let's, uh, billions and billions of subscriptions. Yeah. So, uh, I think... Yeah, let's raid. This is, this is Live or Dev Trying. And... He's working on uh, an Angular CLI SignalR app. So, check it out. Let's uh, head over there and throw a raid to live or dev trying. If you're interested, all you have to do is stick around. I'll be back tomorrow. But everybody's going to be heading over to Live or Dev Trying. We'll be back tomorrow. We'll talk about Raspberry Pi. We'll talk about some of the things that we're trying to accomplish here with this oil tank project. Um, and uh, video today's video will be available a little bit later on YouTube. Thanks so much for joining me. We'll see you then. Take care. to do hey c sharp fritz how are you doing welcome to the channel with that raid of 70 very 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 much appreciate that how are you doing today c sharp fritz in case you guys don't know me my name is rob i'm streaming during the week a little bit during the weekend we're working on uh an angular cli app called open dj radio it's using asp.net web api core for the back end and i'm using signal r for my data transfer layer um, I'm having a weird issue where my poll is being subscribed multiple times to my hub, so I'm correcting that right now by implementing another class. If you guys have any questions when I'm working on, please don't hesitate to put them into the chat. Also, make sure you check out our Discord, and also we're up to 340 develop developers in the Discord. It's a great technical resource. Also, the YouTube, I put all these videos up there.
Um, and I think, why don't we play a game here? Um, so we'll get some hungry, hungry zombies going for you guys here. And we'll do an... Should start now. Oops, I need to 